Hi. Thank everyone for coming for my presentation about writing a language server for RPM spec files. First, for the boring part, my name is Dan Cermak. I work at SUSE as a software developer. I also do things in the Fedora land and other more or less interesting or boring stuff, but since we only ha I already wasted 30 seconds, let's jump into the meat. Um, so what's a language server? Uh, language server or the language server protocol is an invention from Microsoft, one of the good things that came out of this company, and it's a solution of this great old problem. I have invented a new programming language or a tool, and I want people to have great editor support. Oh, no, there's about 500 different editors, and I have to write a plugin for every single one of them. That's far too much work. So here, if you want support for one thing in all editors, you have to write 50 different plugins. And that's kind of redundant, because if you have a programming language, and you have kind of always the same needs for things like auto-completion, or syntax highlighting, or jumping to definitions, refactoring, these are very common things that are in every single programming language, and so it would make sense to standardize this. And that's what the language server protocol is for. That's just a relatively simple-ish JSON RPC protocol, which defines endpoints for editors to call into, and that then the editor can display itself. And this has been a very pragmatic and very clever approach by Microsoft because they are pushing their own little baby, VS Code, which has now taken over the development world, sort of, kind of. And uh, it allows you to just run the language server. That provides all the code smarts. And the editor displays it themselves. Very quick intro. Sorry for that, but we're already. So RPM spec files. I hope you are here because you have suffered uh, a lot with RPMs. So here's a little bit more of the suffering. This is just a, uh, just a screenshot of the, I think it's of the Emacs, yeah, it's the Emacs spec file. Um, this is how RPM spec files look like. So most of the stuff is some macro language, which is more or less inspired by M4, but it's not M4. That would be far too easy, because then you could use M4 to have an abstract syntax tree, maybe. Uh, and the rest is bash, more or less. But you can change that, unfortunately. And to make things harder, when it comes to editor support, uh, RPM parses it and builds it. Nowadays, you fortunately can also print the parsed output, but it's not like you would get a parser or Alexa or get something like as I said, an abstract syntax tree, so it's a little bit complicated working with that. And now you might ask yourself, well, wh why do you want to do this anyway? If I open an, a spec file in my editor, then I get syntax highlighting, get some error messages that are popped up by RPM lint. Yeah, but uh, at least in my humble opinion, most of the editor plugins I've seen are relatively simplistic and the user experience across different editors is very inconsistent. So if you open your spec file in standard Emacs, you get no syntax highlighting, you get some in VI, in VS Code you have to install an extension for that and so on. And as someone who has to futz a lot with spec files, I want a real IDE. I'm used to having Emacs configured or any other editor to give me syntax highlighting, to allow me to jump to definitions, to do refactoring, and I would like that with spec files. And so we thought, well, heck, we have this thing called a hack week, so let's do that. So the hack week is just a short advertisement for SUSE, since they are my employee, we have occasionally hack weeks where we can hack on a project that we want to and myself and two other guys, so Matej and Jehan, we decided to try and have a stab at this and just try to implement a simple prototype whether this is even feasible and possible. We picked first the programming language that was uh, that was Python and uh, since we didn't want to implement the whole JSON RPC layer ourselves, we picked PyGLS as the language server uh, abstraction library. 
that also mainly for the reason because I've used it previously and it actually works very well. And then came the interesting part. Okay, now we have to parse RPMs. And RPM actually has a Python API, but as I said, you don't really get access to anything like an abstract syntax tree, so it's pretty much unusable uh, for our use case, except for a few exceptions. But fortunately, the people from the packet project created the spec file module, which gives you some convenience abstractions. They, they have to call into RPM uh, itself to do most of the stuff, but it's a relatively neat library. It has a nice API. So we decided to pick that and then give it a stab. So one of the, few, uh, one of the things that I found mostly annoying when working with spec files is that the auto completion sort of kind of sucks uh, or is not existent. So I think I'm not even sure if the default Emacs plugin has some. Um, and I if it completes something, it's just a predefined macros. And so we thought, well, but we know all the macros that every RP uh, that's known by RPM, so let's feed it into that. And then also, uh, Jehan actually went through all the work of parsing the, uh, the RPM documentation and uh, giving you all the known sections and all the known uh, package tags uh, and giving you, uh, giving you not only auto completion but documentation for that. Another thing that I have to frequently do is, oh, there's a macro. What the hell is its value? Now you can do that on a hover, and you don't have to go into the terminal type RPM minus capital E and then the macro name. If you are looking for where is this macro defined, it can jump to definitions. So if, there's a, if you have a macro in your spec file, you can just press the correct sequence, whatever that is, in your editor. Um, Another, well, let's say a little useless feature, but it was simple to implement. That's um, your spec file is usually uh, split into sections like the package section, description section, file section, and that's implemented as breadcrumbs. So it is that you can conveniently jump between those. Uh, and then something that's about two days old, an experimental container mode, so that allows you to launch this uh, server in a container which has the great advantage if you are working on, let's say, Fedora or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and you need to find out how does this spec behave on RHEL or SLES or some other distro, because the macros of, your, uh, of RPM are always OS dependent, and this allows you to pick a different one. Now we come to the hopefully more fun part, and that's the demo where I'm... Uh, So first example, same spec file in Emacs. And let's maybe, okay, this is gonna be fun with the mic in my hand. Uh, so this is essentially the breadcrumbs, uh, the breadcrumbs. So if you want to, you can now jump in between the different sections. So let's say I want to go into the change log Okay, this one is boring, so let's pick a different one. Uh, the description of the main package, I can jump between these. Can, uh, can go now into this section and just start typing something and I'll get the correct auto-completion for the package tags. Or I can just start typing a percent and just I'll get the correct completion in here. So then, let's go into prep. Now what should work is hover over, yeah. So if you want to know what auto setup does this, don't ask me what that means. I'm not that proficient in the macro language. Same thing if you have a macro like this one, Fedora, so yes, you now know this is Fedora 39. Um, this one doesn't expand because this is a SUSE-specific macro, and, and so on. If you are interested, where the heck does this come from? So I'll just go into jump to definition. This is this one. Boop. And that's how it works. So then let's see. 
Sorry, nope, nope. VS Code. I'm sorry, the font is a little bit small and I'm not that great in VS Code, so I don't know the key binding to switch it, but as a same thing here, you have your breadcrumbs for the different sections. Also here, it should be able to expand macros, etc., and uh, jump to definition should maybe work. Give me a sec, I think it's F12. Or maybe not. So yeah, w another thing, editors are weird, very weird, and they will do weird things, and sometimes, uh, and also the, the great idea of the language server protocol was to abstract a lot of the, uh, a lot of the editor stuff, and it mostly works, and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, it sucks. Uh, so, how much time we have? Okay, um, so I'm gonna skip demoing the, uh, the container mode because that'll just give you the same thing only in different, only with different values. And let me just quickly jump over a few challenges that we faced. So, hidden global state. RPM likes to keep a lot of internal state and uh, I'm still fighting with that and it's hard to debug because sometimes you load, uh, especially if you have multiple spec files open, sometimes the macros start to m intermix and you suddenly have the, uh, suddenly the version macro from one package expands to the other package and I have no idea how to fix that. Sadly also have to have an in-memory state of your open file, but that's a general problem in uh, in language servers. Another thing that, uh, that you might or might not know, uh, but for finding references to system macros, we actually use the relatively new RPM provides. So if, you're, if you have an RPM package uh, that provides RPM macros, there's now a virtual provide and you can use that to find the correct package and where it is provided. Downside, this is not supported on CentOS 9 and earlier, and also not on Slash, and also not on OpenSUSE Leap, so it will probably not work on those distros, and I can't do anything about that, I'm sorry. Fun part about RPM, if you introduce a syntax error, RPM dies, which means the language server stops working, and you can't do anything about that, unfortunately. And as I said, Ma ma editors are weird and they will do weird things. So VS Code will uh, stop auto-completing certain macros if you start with a percent and then give it the rest of the values. Uh, it's I'm working on fixing that and it's not fun. And yeah, macros are really OS dependent. I have a long roadmap. I'll probably put it on GitHub, but as you can see, that's more than enough work for, more th for, for about the next 10 hack weeks. But if you have another cool idea that's much better than those above, put it on GitHub. The obligatory slide, thanking, uh, so for thank you everyone who contributed this one way or another. If you wanna give it a try, you can find it on GitHub. Please try it, it also, it's also packaged in Fedora, it's also packaged in OpenSUSE. And uh, since I ran pretty much out of time, find me at the OpenSUSE booth if you have questions or hate mail. No, not if you have hate mail, if you have questions. Thank you everyone for your attention. <laughs>